Unfair, your red flags, Tuvarish. We will be looking at Grand Soviet Tank, KV-1. What's up, everybody? It's crazy, dude. <laughs> We're going to be looking at the um, tank today, uh, otherwise known as the KV-1. Um, first off, let me say that... Uh, I have been playing the KV-1 tank, or have played the KV-1 tank one, uh, back in the day when, you know, uh, Mortal Tanks first came out. Uh, I have, a, I've had to deal with the, you know, KV-1, KV-2 split, and all this, and, uh, so now, um, after, after the KV split, I basically sold the KV-1, and recently I've come back to it. So, um, this is the KV-1 as of, um, 8 point, what is it, 8 point? 10 now or something. 8.9, 8.8. I don't know. I forget what uh, update we're on. But uh, just to start out with some history. Um, the KV-1 tank was named after the defense commissar um, and politician. Uh, I'm just going to KV because I cannot pronounce that name. We're shit. Uh, it was used by the Red Army in World War II. Uh, the KV-1 was known for their extremely heavy armor protection during the early part of the war. Uh, especially during the German invasion of the Soviet Union. Uh, how I would explain this tank to people over here over here in the U.S., I would basically say it was kind of how like we ran into the Tiger tank. Um, the Germans, when they first uh, went up against this tank, they absolutely had nothing, absolutely nothing that could take this thing out. The only way that the Germans actually defeated this thing was either take it out by a means of explosives or getting up close, or uh, just waiting for the tank to break down and the Soviet troops to abandon them. That's how devastating these things were. A um, little bit of the history. Uh, after this, this, uh, uh, blah, 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 blah. after the, dis the disappointing results of the multi-turreted T-35 tank, Soviet designers started drawing up a replacement. Um, T-35 conformed to the 1920 notion of the breakthrough tank and with very heavy firepower and armor protection, but suffered from poor mobility. The doctrine of the Soviet deep battle called for an, e an existence of a relatively immobile but heavily fortified siege tanks that were supposed to keep the pressure on enemy troops during a siege, siege phase. 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 Yeah. Thus, the requirements of the KV-1 were heavily skewed uh, towards the potentially not-so-agile tank. Um... The heavy tank was basically supposed to dominate the battlefield. That was basically the plan, basically, to break through. Heavily armored, slow-moving, support the infantry. Most tanks at that time were developed as such. Um, there were several uh, different types of um, configurations of the KV-1 tank that were going through uh, development around the Winter War, which is right before World War II. Uh, the third design was the T-100. It, uh, it was sent to be tested in combat conditions. The KV outperformed the SMK and the T-100 designs. The KV-1's armor hi proved highly resistant to the Finnish anti-tank weapons, making it more difficult to stop. 1939, production of 50 KV, uh, KV were ordered. During the war, with the Soviet, uh, war, the Soviets found it difficult to deal with the concrete bunkers used by the Finns, and a request was made for a tank with a large howitzer, thus the KV-2 heavy tank was developed off of that. The KV's strength included armor that was impenetrable by anti tank uh, by any tank mounted weapon in service, except at point blank range, which is just about every tank. If you let any tank get that damn close, you're gonna die. It had good firepower at the time. It also had good traction on soft ground because the tracks were so big it could disperse the weight good enough. Um, but it had serious flaws. Uh, it was really difficult to steer just because how big the tank was. You know, the Soviets still I believe they still use the the two sticks. Which would basically, for people who don't really know, it, you're, it's basically like applying the brake uh, a brake to one side, which of course now you're trying to stop a, you know, a 70 ton tank by basically just stopping one side. You know, it's eh, not going to be the best, you know, the most mobile tank around. It also uh, had terrible transmission problems. Uh, it, it used an old 20 year old uh, calip caterpillar design, which is unreliable. And soldiers were known to be uh, to have to shift it with a hammer. So just imagine, you know, you're driving your car, and in order to shift, you got to bring out a hammer and knock the clutch, or then knock the uh, the shift. <laughs> so, yeah. 
The, er the ergonomics were poor, uh, had limited visibility, had no turret basket. Uh, furthermore, at 40, oh, 45 tons, excuse me, not 70 tons or 60 tons, uh, it was simply heavy. It was just really, really freaking heavy. It was big, and it was heavy. So this made it harder for them to get over bridges and such, the small bridges that, uh, that were over there in Europe at the time. you got to realize that the biggest thing they had at the time were, you know, carriages <laughs> and shit like that, small cars. Nothing, you know, quite 45 tons worth. The KV ton, uh, or the KV outweighed most of uh, the other tanks in the in of the error, uh, being twice as heavy as the heaviest uh, contemporary German tank. KVs were never equipped with snorkel system to ford shallow rivers, so they had to be left <laughs> to travel to an adequate bridge. The armor and other improvements were added without increasing engine power. So basically. If there was a gun that could take it out, they just upped the arm and said, fuck the engine, which made it even more slower. Yeah, some great brilliance there. <laughs> Later models were less capable of keeping up to speed with medium tanks and had more trouble uh, with more difficult terrain. Addition, its firepower was no better than that of a T-34, which had the same gun, basically, as a 76. It took field reports from senior commanders and certified heroes, quote-unquote, who could be honest without risk of punishment to reveal what a dog the KV-1 really is, quote-unquote. While initially the Soviets made a lot, a lot of poor defense decisions, worsening by the recent cleansing, quote-unquote, of the Soviet military command, the KV-1 was unlike anything the German army had expected to encounter. Some of the battles against numerical superior, uh, superior Alex's forces became legendary. Even, even though operating the KV-1s, uh, the, the KV family of tanks, were severe, severely hampered by restrictions due to weight. It was fearsome and formidable weapon through most of the Second World War. Like I said before, this was like an American Shuren running into a Tiger-1 tank. It, it just terrified the Germans uh, during the beginning of the war. I think it was like 42, for, or maybe like 40 to 42. It was the beast of the battlefield up to a point. And if you guys think, like, the MM is bad, you know, the matchmaking is bad, and woo, just imagine being a Panzer II in World War II and running up against, you know, this KV-1 tank, which happened at the Battle of... I'm going to try to pronounce this. Krasnodvarkinishki... Uh. 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 Right? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> well, let me check that again. Hold on. Yeah, it was, um, Kranzgrovnish, I believe, or some fucking word. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, uh, they took out a whole shitload of tanks, basically because they were just running up against, the, the Soviet defenders were just running up against Panzer IIs and Panzer Threes, which, up against this thing, at range, not gonna beat. So... So, with the history out of the way, um, let's go over the in-game stats and how they are represented in the game. Alright, so I'm going to do a little comparison here, because I believe... Okay. So, it's actually kind of funny. Um, the armor in this game, it's only, le it's only at 75 millimeters, but almost all the way around, except for the rear armor. Uh, however, the armor, I guess this was probably one of the, the armor configurations of one of the earlier models, I guess, because it says, well, at least by the Wikipedia, it was 90 millimeters maximum, so I guess, you know, later models had more armor. But this also could be for just for game balance, so, whatever. So you got 75 frontal, 75 side, uh, 70 rear, that's not bad, and the way the armor is, you know, um, at least from the front, how it's angled and everything, like... If you're tier 5, you got to actually aim for this little thing right here in order to penetrate. So, you know, it's it doesn't have any big glaring weak spots, really. You know, I mean, it's got this little one right up here, you know, this flat piece here. It's about the best you're going to get, you know, to a, a weak spot or a weak part. That is, I'm not going to even say it's a weak spot, because a lot of times, you know, it, it could just be slightly angled to say, here, and you're not getting through. <laughs> So, you really got to be careful where you take your shots at. You really want to get this thing on that side. So, that's the only way that, you know, the enemy is really going to penetrate you is from the side. They can from the front, you know, around this little um, gun piece right here. The gun man, they could probably get through there. I don't think these things really 
uh, have any, you know, hit points behind it. And, like, these little scopes, I guess they are. Or they could be optics. But, um, you know, you don't really have much to, too much to worry about. You know, unless you expose your flat sides or your ass, you, you should be good. Um, turret armor, you got 110 all the way around, at least with the, the top... On. Yeah, yeah, the second, uh, the, the uh, original stock turret is um, a bit lower at 90, 75, and 75. But still, you know, it's not bad. Um, with with the stock turret, however, you also want to keep in keep in mind that it's a little more square. So you want to face it forward. You know, if you're retreating and you don't want your ammo rack, you know, just turn your gun around. You know, or if you're falling back or going to somewhere where you're getting shot in the ass or something, just turn your turret around. You know, if you don't want to get hit in the back, because that thing that the original KV turret is quite flat. Um, 640 hit points. I do not believe that is bad for tier 5 heavy. But I'm going to make sure. Because that has 700. I don't think the Germans really have any good tier 5 heavies. Heavies. I don't think... I can't... I can't see the 3001 as a heavy. So, doesn't seem like heavies to me. I don't know. Jeremy, wow, I didn't realize how many, <laughs> how many uh, heavy tanks they do not have. Um, I think the Americans might have one, right? Yeah, T1 heavy. 600. So, yeah, it has a little bit of more um, armor. Or hit points, excuse me. Its speed limit is 34 kilometers. That is woefully... Depressing. This thing moves slow as shice. Or shit. Well, whatever. It is slow as crap. It is horrible at maneuvering. I mean, if you're trying to, you know, try to maneuver this thing and you gotta do it fast, you're not gonna be going anywhere fast. So just keep that in mind. If you're heading east and you wanna go west, make sure you make that decision beforehand and not after. Um, basically, it's a mobile pillbox with a gun. <laughs> or a cannon. Uh, sh uh, guns. Yes, guns. Alright, you start it with the basic 76, which is, um, it's alright. Not bad. Average damage, 110. You know, it's tier, you know, basic tier 5. It's not bad. But, you know, it, it doesn't really have all that much penetration power. You know, it's your standard default, you know, shitty stock gun that you're going to have to suffer for the throw. Um, the 57 is probably one of the better choices over the 76 because uh, it fires really fast. So it has a high ROF. And uh, its average damage is a little wanting, but its penetration um, is damn good. You know, it's, it's not bad. Uh, then you have the 122 for those of you who like derp. Um... Well, you know, everything with derp. You know, you got a lot of damage or possible damage, but you have shitty penetration. Um, I wouldn't really use it. Not my play style. I'm more of a, uh, I, I want to shoot for weak spots and do damage than shoot at something and just hope for damage. Because I always get stuck in these positions with, you know, heavy tanks. I'm trying to shoot at something from, you know, medium range with a derp. You know, I can't get any closer without exposing myself. And here I am with a, you know... A cricket gun. <laughs> um, then you have the gun that I think that most people would agree is the best, which is the 85 millimeter F30, which, out of all of them, is probably the in between. You know, it has it has excellent damage, it has excellent ROF, and it has excellent penetration. Uh, I think that is the best way to go. You know, try to just grind for it. Um, what else? So, um, yeah. View range isn't bad. Signal range isn't bad. You know, it's just, it's a Soviet heavy. You know, you don't expect so much for view range. Um, researching first, uh, you're going to have to go for tracks, I believe. It's been so long since I've actually had the, you know, <laughs> everything was basically unlocked for me already because, you know, I, I, I had the KV-1 before the KV-1 and KV-2 split. So, uh, and I was back in, like, what, 7 point? Five or something, or or six point eight. I can't remember. That was a while ago. So uh, you want to go for the tracks first, the engines second, and they just start working up the guns. If, if you could fit the fifty-seven on, 
without, you know, going for, you know, if you want to go for that first and then the tracks, you know, be my guest. It's probably the best thing to do is probably go for the 57 and then the tracks and then the, you know, engine, at least one of them. Get the upgraded turret so you can start grinding for the 85 and, you know, get your engines up before you really start grinding for that uh, 122. Because once you get that 85, you're going to be set. You don't really need the 122 unless, you know, you really want it or already have it, you know already unlocked and then just go you can either go for the kv2 the kv1s or the t150 and um you know do, do it that way um i have i've played all three of the tanks that after after that um what was i doing with the kv1s that's warranting oh okay yeah what tank should you go after it depends on your play style um if you like the way the kv1 is you know it, it's how slow it is with the gun and everything go for the t150 if you like a more quicker, less armor, more brute force, you know, brute, you know, just that main, like, one, if you want the 122 that everybody's so happy about, go for the KV-1S. It's probably one of the most popular tanks on the North American server, and I think the European server as well. It's also used in tank companies a lot, having been a part of a clan once. That's what they use at Tier 6 uh, com uh, tank companies. Um, KV-2 was just... Unless you're going for the artillery, there's no reason to go for it. But if you just want the, if you want to go to Derp Town, you know that's where that's the tank you want to go. This thing can hurt. KB2s can hurt, you know, mouses. So <laughs> keep that in mind. Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, one of the biggest problems that I, I've seen people with the KV1 tanks is just simply where it falls on the tech tree. And what I mean by that is, um, you know, for noobs coming in, they're coming straight from, you know, the light line. They see somewhere, oh, the KV-1's a damn good heavy tank, and they run right to the T-28. And coming from the playstyle of the T-28 to the KV-1, I've been there. And it's just... <laughs> it's a totally, completely different playstyle. I mean, you're going from driving a bar, you know, a nimble, sort of nimble, huge-ass barn with, uh, I don't know if they actually took that gun off, did they? Yes, they took off the 85 off this thing doing the rebalance. So, <laughs> going from that and then going to the KV-1 is just two different play styles. Yes, you're still big. Yes, you're still a target. But at least a T-28 had some speed to it, you know. So you went from that to this slow monstrosity. It could be pretty daunting to try to, you know, you gotta quickly, you know, shift your play styles. Unless, you know, you've played other trees or whatever. But if you're still a noob, you're gonna have to, you know, try to twist your play style a little bit. So, basically what you want to use the KV-1 as is either a a breakthrough tank. It works very well as a break, breakthrough tank. Um, and it's also a good defending tank if you happen to be the last one around and you're the only one, you know, if you know, you're about to get capped on or whatever, they made a breakthrough, you can actually get back to the cap fast enough. You may be able to stop most of the defenders, because most of the time it's usually like a, a half-beat heavy tank that's left and a few lights. You, know, you can own that area. If, if you're good enough, you can actually own the battlefield at that point. That's what I'm saying. Usually if a KV-1 tank is left, there's usually not that many tanks that can take it out by the end. So you do have the distinct advantage at the end of the match. Um, so you want to kind of use it as a kind of... On, on the front line, you want to be like I like I said in the other videos. There's there's usually like three or four lines of battle. You have the front line assault tanks. You have the the two lines of support tanks, or the one line of support tanks. Mediums are mostly like flankers. That's what I consider the third line, and then fourth line is artillery and you know such like that. So this would be the front line. It it for its tier, it has excellent armor. It has you know, it's it's slow, so it's a slow lumbering uh, sort of attack, and you can really build an attack off this tank if you know what you're doing. If you're in a nimble tank, you see that KV, let them go forward, let them draw some fire, and then you could just pivot off of them and uh, you know flank the enemy or get a few pot shots in. So, and if you're the KV one tank, stay in the group. If, if Even if everybody's just going one way and they leave a flank open, you do not want to be called alone in the KV-1 just because how unmaneuverable it is. You will not be able to fight off everyone most of the time. You might get lucky in a game and just get cocky and then do it again and you'll die. So, And just to let you know, 
they will be looking for you. If if you're on the top tier, most more experienced players will actually try to single out KB1 tanks just for what they are. And they do have a certain respect level within the tier because they are pretty, you know, they, they are pretty tough to take out if you don't know what you're doing. And uh, mo more experienced players will try to take those out so that way their lesser experienced team members can, you know, exploit that. So, so that's my big rant. <laughs> but uh, overall, I, I, I do I do like the KV1 tank. Um, I'm still trying to actually get used to it, considering, you know, like the, like I said, the last time I really, really, really played it, like I played about 15 matches in it since the update. I'm still trying to get used to exactly how to play it. I know the the theory behind how to play it. I'm just trying to find out exactly how I want to play it or how I fit into it just because I'm not used to, you know, I, I used to have, you know, the, the KV-2 turret on here with the 107. <laughs> That's what I'm used to. I'm used to playing the KV-2 at, you know, these tiers, not, not you know, um, the KV-1. But, you know, it's not a bad tank. It, it does have that sort of... You know, it, it has that sort of, you know, heavy armor feel. You feel invulnerable, but just don't take it to that extent where you think you are and you fuck yourself over. <laughs> so, you know, just keep that in mind. You're, you're not the best tank in, you know, you're not, you're not the heaviest armored thing in the world. Yeah, you are armored decently, but you're not the best. So I think that's, uh, that's just about it. So, uh, I've been Crazy Toast. I am crazy toast, and uh, I hope you enjoyed the uh, the video. Um, you know, you know, subscribe and all that other junk. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. Peace.